Aaron, real estate broker with Sotheby's International Realty Canada. I'm very excited today to welcome you to my new series, Coffee with Vivian Live. So let me get my coffee and uh, we'll start the show. So today's episode is about the top home design trends for 2021 featuring Marcella Barrick of Lux Design Inc. in Toronto. This, the design shop is located at 628 Wellington Street West, downtown Toronto. And our home is our hearth, a place where we are spending more and more time. And since we are at home so much, what can be better than to enjoy our space and make it beautiful and comfortable and practical? It should give you a smile and make you happy, especially the rooms that we live in, both inside and out. So in this episode with Coffee with Vivian Live, I'm very excited to introduce you to our special guest. But before I do, let me tell you a bit about the series. In previous episodes, uh, I've interviewed Melissa Houston. She is a financial expert writer for Forbes.com. On another show, we discussed modern marriage and we had a team of family lawyers and a divorce financial expert. And on the last episode, we featured Esther Goldstein and Paul Kudajar, who talked about the challenges that seniors face with regard to housing, healthcare, and basic support needs facing this demographic. So Coffee with Vivian covers many topics, real estate, interior design, lifestyle, the environment, technology, culture, wellness, and more. I'm happy to share with you my book, which um, has recently come out, which is called The Boomer Seven Step Guide to Downsizing, Overcoming Fear and Discovering Freedom. And I cover many topics that have to do with boomers and seniors downsizing. However, the tips cover anything to do with people moving, buying and selling at any age. So I'm happy to share that with you um, as well. You can find that at uh, VivianSharon.com slash book. So today I'm very, very excited to welcome our special guest, Marcella Barrick. And we are discussing interior design trends for 2021. Hi, Marcella. Hello. hello. Great to see you. So let me tell you a little bit about Marcella first. She's a project manager and an integral member of Lux Design Team in Toronto. With 10 years of interior design experience, Marcella has a keen eye for detail, style, quality, and client-centered approach to design. She offers balance of creativity, crea collaboration, thoughtfulness, progressive thinking, transforming, transforming clients' unforeseen visions with respect to all aspects of design. She is terrific with her clients and really, really enjoys what she does. And she follows in the footsteps of her father, who was also a designer. So welcome and let's get our coffee ready and have a little chat and we'll take a little, we'll hold our coffee and we'll have a little photo op. Okay, so I'm really excited to, to speak to you today and um, I'd like to ask you a few questions. So tell us about self-expression in design today. So it's actually pretty interesting. I just did a renovation myself. So I can also talk from experience. And um, like when you're doing it yourself, not just as a designer, I'm still a person that lives in my home going through the motions. So I wanted my space to reflect me or you want your space to feel like you. So let's say 
you are a person that travels the world and you want to showcase like certain pieces that you've bought or you know, like vibrant colors or you want things that make you feel happy. It's really important to bring it into your home. A lot of people think, oh, I live here temporarily or I don't know how long we're going to be here. It's not just a house. It's not just four walls. It's your actual home. It's part of you. So what better way than to express yourself in things that like you like or like to listen to or your favorite color? You have so many different walls, so many different materials to use that you can really showcase how you feel. And it actually, like we were saying, makes you feel really happy every day walking into your space. Absolutely. And how important is it in making a statement? Because not everybody likes the same things. And you might have some idea of what you like, but you can't put your yourself totally, you put your personality in it, but it's their home. It's their condo. So how do you read the client yeah. and figure that one out? So every designer approaches things um, differently. Some designers are very big on, you know, this is my vision and this is the way that it goes. Um, mm -hmm. My first step with clients or the way Lux does it is a consultation. I really want to know how you function in this space. Are you an entertainer? Do you have children? Um, do you like candlelight dinners? Do you, there's all these like different things that people, are you big movie watchers? Maybe some people don't even like TV, right? Like a lot of new people don't even have cable. Everybody streams. So it might not be the focus people sometimes just use their laptops so because we're at home sometimes that space where it's just for tv is a place for conversation so i really just want to know how people use their space and how they function right from the second so a lot of clients like to start from like sitting down let's say in their dining room i make sure we actually get up start from the door and i say what do you do when you come home where do you put your coat where do you put your keys? Where do you take your shoes off? Like the basic fundamentals of how you live. And then I go into the process of asking, what do you actually do day to day? Like, what do you do for work? What do you do? Because it all kind of helps you navigate. Um, I like to sit down when I come home, like take off my shoes. I need a bench. I need somewhere to sit and I need to see myself. So a lot of people are like, oh, okay. So it's just very functional. I think function first, and then we'll we'll bridge that into like your likes and taste in terms of color palettes. So definitely knowing the personality of your clients, that's in every business that we do. Myself in real estate, it's the same thing. What is it they want? What is their lifestyle? Where do they want to live? And in your particular area, it's how do you want to live? Mm -hmm. Once they find the home, once they find the condo, once they're living wherever they're living, what kind of feeling do they want in their home? So I guess the question is, what are you seeing today? What is it? And it's a demographic thing, perhaps, too. What do, do you find people want? Well, we have Pinterest. <laughs> so I find a lot of people tend to want their house to look like a magazine or something that they saw or something they experienced on a trip. And if this is something that you really want for your home, you can duplicate it or you can live in a space um, that kind of matters to you. So let's say you see something like it also depends on budget. There's so many things, of course, in real estate as well on how you want to transform the space. So I just go with function first to see how you live. And then really in terms of colors and stuff, it, it kind of goes progressing. Sometimes a client will show me what they like. They're like, I saw this. What do you think? And I'll look at the space and say, can you live with it every single day? Of course, you can change your mind in a couple of years or whatever. But you do kind of want some timeless pieces doing renovations and changing all these things in a house. It's, it's kind of a bit of work. So you want something a little bit that lasts a little bit longer, something that you'll enjoy. So you're not kind of transient with your pieces. So tell us about some real hands-on things that you're seeing, such as colors. Right. So Let's I start noticed, with that. So I've noticed um, in terms of colors, muted kind of bright tones. So you have almost this kind of, feeling of like clay colors um even in here like i'll just use this as an example the the kind of blush tones are very in um the feeling of clay and organics are very in um i'll just hold up this chart i did just so for you to see the differences so the top one is a benjamin moore color chart this one and this is the uh this is the pharaoh and ball one as well 
So if you look at it, they're, they're colors, they're beautiful, but they're a little bit muted, right? Mm -hmm. So even with Benjamin Moore, you see you still have some dark tones, you still have some of those clay tones um, that work really nice. So you can still feel like you've added color to your home, but they're a little bit more muted and not like a bright, bright red or like a bright, bright blue. They're a little bit more softer, mm -hmm. but they still invoke color and still invoke that like emotion of happiness. That is such a nice palette. I really like it. I mean, you do see a lot of homes, very stark white with a bit of earth tone going on. But I wonder if that is really the warmth that one really wants to live with. White is great, I'm sure. And I'd like your opinion or some version of white. And there's so many different kinds of white. And then it's easier to decorate around. But maybe that's not the fashion or the, the, well, the style. It's it's all relative. So I love white walls. That's just like a personal thing to me. But I love art and I love showcasing colorful, colorful, colorful pieces. So if you do something like a stark white wall, it's almost like great to showcase literally like vast, like big, big color, which is how you can incorporate it if you're not so kind of worried about like doing kind of like a crazy color. Also, what's really great is accent walls yes. or hallway walls. Or my favorite place, if you want to, it, every designer is going to have their own opinion, but I love the powder room for that place where you're like, okay, I was scared to do this pattern and this room go crazy. Like any color, any pattern, mix it up, brass, uh, blacks, different metals, different textures. And it's kind of like a little oasis. So if you're kind of uncomfortable about starting, it's actually cool to start it in the powder room, see what happens there, see how you feel. And then you can kind of progress through the house. I always tell my clients the powder room is the one place you can kind of go nuts. Like feel free to do whatever you want in here. Any color goes, it doesn't have to flow with the home. It's kind of like a little oasis that you can kind of, you know, guests come over, they go in, you're kind of transported into a different place completely, which is kind of cool. That's really interesting to hear that. By the way, if anyone has any questions and I see that we're having all kinds of comments, please place them in the chat and we can maybe answer them as we, uh, before we, we conclude. So this is really interesting about wall colors. Um, and metallics. I know that that's really big and, and fabulous wallpaper and even florals, which you would think, oh my goodness, florals is so passe, but there are florals and there are florals. I'm well, curious to know your thought about wallpaper. Yeah, I love wallpaper. I, I use it almost, I would say in 99.99% of projects. Um, it's actually really cool that you talk about florals in terms of trend. So Philip Jeffries and even murals wallpaper are the two that I'll just talk about that I use a lot in different clients' homes. The trend right now, their one is called, the new collection is called Resort. And the murals wallpaper one is called Botanical Home Fresh. So this floral kind of resort feel is back. And I guess because we haven't maybe had the chance to go away, um, now you can bring that kind of going away home. So I just so happen to have like, this is the Philip Jeffries new collection catalog. And I noticed this is one of the patterns. It's floral, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I'll see, this is another one as well. You kind of get transported like you're on vacation. Hmm. It's, it's stunning. So that's that one. And then the murals wallpaper one, I'll just show you really quickly down here, like it's an explosion of floral, but it's kind of in that muted tones. Like you have those terracottas, you have those blushes, you have that kind of sage um, green. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like bringing that resort vacation floral feeling into your home. Do you feel that your clients are really open to that? Um, if they're, is it a personality thing? If they're very, let's say on the state and conservative, don't take risk kind of person, they're not going to choose that. But if they're sort of more flamboyant, they're going to go in another route. You have to sort of gauge their taste, I guess. I think I work with the client's taste. I, I try to push them. So my first, when I do a presentation, I usually say, do this. Um, and then we kind of go back and forth about being open to the decision that we've made. The whole point of working with the designers, having trust in the vision and in the process, but also at the end of the day, it's something that they have to live with. So I have to understand if it's too much or don't forget, depending on your household, who your partner is, right? You have like, 
children perhaps, or you have like another family member. There's so many different people yes. in the home that you kind of have to appease. So um, I find also design is almost like being a therapist as well. <laughs> you have to appease all parties um, in the home. So what I like to do sometimes is I say, okay, if we do this in this room, then this other person gets to do this in the other room. So it's, it's, kind of fun. it's kind of fun in that way. You really have to read your, your audience, so to speak. So I have some comments here, really interesting ones. Um, a fellow by the name of Mr. Mustache. I don't know him personally. Oh, part of our team. I know. <laughs> you know him maybe. So Marcella, what is your favorite design style? And if you have a client who likes a specific style that you don't like, what do you do? Oh, great question. Um, I don't always agree with my clients and their style, but I also have to respect their style. And what I do is if I don't like their style, I literally will tell them this is probably not something I would pick, but I do immerse myself in that palette of like what they like. And I kind of start getting used to like those types of ideas and incorporating a little bit of what I like into it. So I'll still kind of keep trying to push like what I like, but not fully. I really try yeah. to respect. And that's one thing. Um, I really, really try to respect the client's vision because sometimes they're very particular about what they want and they just want a little bit of guidance um, so that their vision comes to life. Not necessarily that they want. Some people hire you because they want your vision. They're like, okay, we like Marcella's style. We like this and that. But sometimes they're like, we just want help getting our expression out there. And so if they show me like a, a picture of something they like, I'll kind of show them three other ways that it's similar, but not exactly and say, let's do it a little bit different so that we're not like, you know, we're not just being like Pinterest and like following suit. Yeah. You really have to listen plus inject uh, some of your skill. Yeah. And I have two comments here. Uh, Sharon Ritchie. Hi. She says, um, yes, to be a therapist is part of your job. And she also says, uh, powder rooms, it's a great place to experiment because it's a small space and that really makes a lot of sense. Totally. Like you had said before. Yeah, and then once you're done that, people that come over, their friends are like, wow, this is beautiful. This is amazing. And then people feel really good about it. And sometimes then they're open to experimenting in other places in the home. Um, what I also do, and not all designers probably like to do this, is I like doing it in stages. So if you want to just focus on these couple rooms and then you feel really good about it and then we move into the other rooms at another time, sometimes people need to get used to the idea of change and that's really what it's about. And then they can kind of see the whole vision um, come together and then we gradually, like I have some clients I've worked with for years. You know, we worked like in certain rooms or places in the house and then we gradually like moved into the basement or yeah. worked on all the bedrooms. We don't always do it all together. Yeah. Um, I do tend to stay in my clients' lives for, for a long time. Like I've been to some of their like kids graduations. I've seen their kids grow up. Um, their kids help me around the house to like pick paint colors. So you almost become part of, um, a member of these, you know, your client's home. Exactly. And you're commenting about doing it in stages, which of course involves house disruption. If you do it all in one go plus budget. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it like, it's all, it's all relative on like what you want to, what you want to do and how much you want to spend. Exactly. So, on the home, right? Like there's different budgets, different things you want to work with. Um, yeah. So that's great. So a question um, about the wallpaper companies that you mentioned, could you repeat? Uh, Susan is asking what yeah. are the Philip Jeffries? Is Philip one... Yeah. And the other one is called murals wallpaper. Okay, they were really beautiful. And uh, you have some boards, some art boards behind you. Yeah. Um, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what you've prepared that you can show us? Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about, since we're talking about trends and not just about like the home and whatever, actually, and not just color, I wanted to go into different areas about design for now. So the first board, I can just, well, it's actually really cool if you look at it here. Um, these are all different accessories all over the home. And if you kind of notice what's interesting is they kind of follow the same color palette that's in right now. These muted kind of still colored tones of like blushes and terracottas, muted blues, that mossy green, and everything kind of has that organic feeling. So even though you buy furniture, you've done your walls, um, maybe you did new millwork, 
It's always the final touch to everything to tie it all in is, is accessories. So it's really kind of cool to find accessories. And if you look now on in the retail market, everything has this like organic feel to it, um, nice curves, this feeling of clay. Um, so across the board from companies even like Crate and Barrel or like West Elm to even like a Canadian company like Indigo, they even have like a home section as well. Um, that you can see all these kind of organic feels in the accessories. It's really getting back to perhaps a style. Did it ever exist like in recent decades before with the teak and with the, I don't know, I'm just trying to get a feel of how things have shifted. Is it something due to our experience of this past year in 2020? Now we're 2021 and we've been affected by it. I'm, I'm guessing so. Like people are just becoming more rooted or grounded. I'm thinking that's what it is. You're just coming back to home base where, you know, and it also at the end of the day, design is design. So still people will like flashy and this and that and whatever. But I've even noticed my place change and evolve. So when I first um, lived here, I had like studded detail, like on my, on my sofa. And I had like, uh, my art was like all metallic, like all very like, uh, mirror surfaces and things like that where now my space has kind of like this like oatmeal coloring and this clay and terracotta feel sand coloring um my millwork looks like just it's just wood like finish like it, it has nothing else i just enhanced it with some brass hardware so it, it's all kind of feels very like light and airy and comforting yeah um, in the it, home as opposed it's to like Sorry, as opposed to, sorry. To oh, as opposed to like, I think before, like it was more like a show. Like my house was more like, you yeah. know, which is great too. You People still love that and it's great, but I just yeah. love this more like organic feel. I have like pompous grass, like in, in the corner, like I have flowers everywhere. Plants is another like amazing trend, like plants galore. Like I love plants in the home. I always have, I just because I was doing a renovation before I had to transport my plant somewhere else. And we were worried about the cold to transplant it back. So I'm waiting on uh, next week. I think it will be warmer and I'll bring it back, but it's like huge. And I basically had it in my family since I was three, I think this plant. And then I just grown with like snake plants in the house. Um, there's all kinds of local nurseries that kind of provide like either we obviously can't get an olive tree plant, I believe. I don't think it's, I don't think you can grow it here, even though that's kind of on trend right now. You can always buy fake. Not sure how sustainable that is, but it's all good. You can keep it forever. Um, but plants are a really big thing as well. I so sustainable, the whole angle of, and, and the desire of sustainable design. First of all, your comment about plants is huge because I, I think that it's definitely a, something that's come back. I remember ferns and from way back, real yeah. firm. And then people wanted it clean and didn't want the upkeep. But because of what we've gone through, I think the whole warmth and the importance of bringing the outside inside is, is yeah. part of the, the whole re, re, return to having a lot of flowers and, and, and plants at home. Well, plants also help you breathe better. Um, that's also really good. Like because we're at home, you need something to kind of like refresh the air all the time. So you actually they're do doing a purpose as well. They're right. also really beautiful to look at, but you're actually like doing some good for yourself as well. Great so, point. Yeah. I, are there any plant lovers in the house? I'm sure that there are a lot of people watching and will watch this uh, as well that are are listening to the fact that uh, going. Uh, back to having a lot of plants at home for health reasons and sustainability and and beauty and nature at home is really important. Um, I have a question or two. Uh, this is so interesting. I I, I could continue on for a long time, <laughs> but um, I wanted to ask: What happens if a spouse or a couple one one loves traditional and whatever i don't know what totally different classic and the other likes modern and edgy what do you do when that happens between a couple that happens probably like 90 percent of the time um you you find a way to compromise you really say like um this is the chair that we're gonna maybe use and then this sofa is gonna be like this and you and you can mix and match like 
no one says it has to be all one type of way. So even in like spaces, you can incorporate uh, different materials or different furniture from different time periods. So rattan is back or it's been back for a while. Um, I even have like a rattan chair, but then I have these like oatmeal and then I have like black, like you can kind of mix and match and make it work with like accessories. So sometimes if, you know, depending on who works in the office more, I sometimes let them know that the office um, will kind of be like their, their moment to shine um, or incorporating, like, let's say in the living room, I say, okay, so the coffee table, it's almost like a game. Like the, the, this partner gets it or um, the sofa, this partner gets it. And then I kind of do this game where like, but you already got a point there and you get a point here. That's how I've dealt with it. And it kind of works. And they kind of are like, okay, I see what you're saying. So you listen to, to, to each side and you figure out the best solution. And um, I want to ask you one or two questions um, before we go. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is about um, the importance of the home office today. Yes. What can you say this has taken a real center stage for all of us, no matter if you're in a condo or a home or any, wherever you live, what, what's happening with home offices? So I, I tell people this a uh, couple questions. I wrote them down, so I might read them out to you. Sorry. So I always ask people about their home office. Is it a multi-purpose room? So is this home office um, isolated? Is it in the gym? Is it shared? Is it open? Like where, where is it? So this kind of helps us understand how the color palette will work depending on the room, like where we're going to have it, who will be using it. Is it one person, multiple people, you and the children who has access to, to see how it functions. Um, the next vibe is like, what, what's the vibe do you want? Do you want it to be more formal or do you want it to be more relaxing? So some people want it more relaxing because maybe they're just on their laptop. Some people maybe work with like five screens. So they need like a proper desk um station and then i asked them like do you want to do wall wallpaper you want to just do paint or you want to do some mill work what's your budget open to because we can do some beautiful things with wallpaper like let's say we want to have a tile people love like even this is concrete right they have a wallpaper now that can look like concrete and you can kind of achieve this wow. look wallpaper, which is pretty amazing um then I always ask them like, what's your favorite color or what do you, what color makes you feel good? So I'll try to incorporate that color in that space. Um, is there certain art you want to showcase in there? So I'm actually currently working on a, on a home gym right now where it's, it's sorry, it's a home office in the gym. So we kind of had to incorporate an area for the workout. Plus because they, the partners have like one person works downstairs because they don't want to disturb the person upstairs working from home. So they kind of kept the distance so they can talk on the phone to their clients. And so I asked like, what's your favorite color? Um, what art do you like? And we're going to incorporate the art and the colors in this space so that he feels good at home working, but also can stay like productive at the same time so that everything is accessible. Have you, have you done a lot of home renovations, office renovations during this uh, past uh, year? Yes, that's yes. probably one of the, that's why I have I get the questions I have already because I've been doing it with so many clients. Many people. It's the look that they want to achieve. And also I have another client. I don't, I'm not going to use their name, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, they're kind of cute. Like uh, the partner wants to work, but they also want their other partner to play like video games beside them because they like spending time together. Yeah. So we're creating a nook plus a desk because they love spending so much time together and thought it was the cutest thing. But every couple works or partners work completely different. And so I try to make sure that it works, so that it still looks beautiful, but it still addresses their needs. A question before we move off yeah. of the topic of offices, because I have a really important question someone, a Nagar is asking, I'm going to ask you in a second. Um, the Zoom background in an office, any oh. thoughts? Any thoughts to, let's say, if they don't want to put up the virtual Zoom background? I mean, I'm in my home office that I, in my condo that I had created just prior. It's a basic, clean, white and gray office. In yeah. the back of my marketing area um, with my folders and things, flyers. Um, so I use it. I prefer it actually to this virtual backgrounds, but maybe somebody in a different field being you know, wanting something splashy murals or something. Um, we did also, a friend of mine is also a realtor and uh, in their home office, we did this like really amazing 
wallpaper print and people like go wild for it. So when he's doing his Zoom, I guess his podcast or his like weekly discussions, it's like the coolest thing because and people just go wild for it. So they never thought that they would pick this wallpaper, but they actually love it and people are very receptive to it. So yeah. if you have the time to do something cool and interesting in your office and you want to showcase that, I would say do it. Other than I that, it's personal preference, but I think it looks so cool when you're talking and you have like such an interesting background going on. It's true. People will focus on the background more than, well, let's hope not. But uh, Susan uh, is asking that question about Zoom and background, which is really today, all the time we're spending at home and Zooming in our home offices, it's like, or whichever method we use is pretty huge. This is a really interesting question that um, um, Negar is asking. She's yeah. asking about if one needs and wants to sell a home or a condo, uh, for whatever reason they want to go on the market this spring, let's say, what are the upgrades that are really important if they can afford to do that to prep the home or the condo for sale that buyers today want? Well, you and I both can answer this, right? Because from a realtor perspective too. Um, I tell clients the bathroom is a really great place to update because we do use our bathrooms a lot. And I do think a kitchen. Because walls and paint color, you can do a quick paint job, but if the kitchen is done and you kind of pick a palette, um, I wouldn't go crazy with picking like a stone that's like, you know, a certain marble and you spent like so much money, but an easy, nice, like a, like a similar to a Calcutta or something like a super white or something very just plain and simple. Um, a lot of people still like to use shaker uh, in the kitchen. I'm, I'm a minimalist, so I love no handles on the uppers of a kitchen. I like just to grip underneath, and I love doing hardware on the bottom or on elongated doors. So I think you can do it in a cost-effective way. Um, the kitchen, you should get a return on your value, I think, in the kitchen and in the bathrooms. Yes. It depends on this, the, like what your condition of your house is, right? So if you still have popcorn ceiling, that's probably something you'd want to change. Um, there's different elements, right? Like how down the road is the house and how much could you change? Because people can change paint and people are going to change things as they want. Yes. Um, but I do think that the kitchen is a great place and probably the bathrooms because going into a reno, uh, the cost of a bathroom, like that's buying a new home, you really want those two things done. I'm sure as you've seen on the market, majority of people are updating those parts of the home to, to sell them. Right, exactly. If if that is the direction they choose, I have also clients who just will have it as is and you adjust the sale price because they don't want to do the reno. They're not in the market to do the reno. They know that whoever's going to buy the house or the condo will update it because the home is 20, 30 years <laughs> maybe behind as far as some of the decor with Broadloom and all the colors and they'll just sell it. At, it'll be market value for the fact that it hasn't been rented, so it'll be a bit below that uh, adjusted accordingly. So it depends what one really wants to do exactly when one prepares a home or a condo for sale. So my last question to you is, this is a very emotional thing too. The essence of home, what is the essence or what does it mean for you? What is the essence of home? What does it mean? Oh, that's a fun, that's, I guess, a fun and loaded question. Um, I It's it's interesting because, you know, when you go on vacation and you're staying at the most magical place, but you just want to go home, like it, there's nothing like home because it's comforting, right? So you have your certain mug that you use every day, right? You have the certain like place that you read a book that you find comforting or the nook in the sofa that you like to you know, read in, or maybe you like, see, I love the bedroom. Like I have 5 million pillows. I love the lush and the plush of it. I love sometimes just walking in my room and seeing it. I love just the feeling of how a home feels comfortable and feels, I love just, a, like, I just, I think I just love things clean. <laughs> so to me, the home is just somewhere where I just feel myself and especially working from home a lot. Like I'm in jogging pants, um, I want to feel comfortable and I want to have everything feel accessible. So I guess for me, the essence is comfort. It's mm -hmm. just feeling that like I can be 1,020% myself in my home. 
so that I feel good. Like if you don't feel good when you walk into your home, I tell clients like that's the worst thing. Like the second you wake up, you should feel like a sense of like, ah, and good. Or when you walk in through the door, you know, I think that's why like little mini renos or updating things, it really does change your spirit. Like it really like a coat of paint, it just changes the vibe. It changes maybe the way that you like even wake up or things. We like beautiful visual things. That's why we love nature, right? Nature itself is so beautiful. The color palette of the sky, meaning the grass, green and blue, like it's amazing. So in your home to wake up as well to something that's like visually stunning all the time. And I'm not talking dollar value. I'm just talking literally just things that make you feel happy. That's to me like what the essence of home is. Well, Marcella, this has been so interesting and I totally agree with you. It's all about how you feel and feeling comfortable and happy in your own home. And uh, really, really grateful that you came here today representing Lux Design in Toronto and uh, telling us a little bit about what you do and what the company does. And tell us how we can find you and find Lux Design in Toronto. Like physically, we're on Queen, we're on King Street, but um, if you just Google us, Lux Design Toronto, it should come up first there. There it is, you put it on the screen. Yeah, luxdesign.ca. And then Correct. you'll see we have a pretty um, big team and we're all amazing in terms of what's great about the team is we all have kind of different visions about design and kind of we do sometimes bounce ideas off one another about, you know, what we think, what they think, because um, we're all different people, you know, to start off with, with different journeys and coming together with kind of the eye of a designer. We kind of have some really cool conversations about how we feel we can help our clients. So is the company working across Canada, the various uh, designers? Yes, there is. Yeah. I'm primarily focused just in Toronto. So I just work with the Toronto team. But yes, we do have in other parts of Canada, which is great. So when when I looked up the company, though, I saw it was on Wellington. Has it moved? and Or was it on King Street? Oh, sorry, it? on Wellington, off King Street. Sorry, I keep saying King Wellington Street. Wellington and King. Yeah, yeah. Wellington yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, what I thought. Yeah. It's the beautiful um, house on the corner with like white and black with all the greenery. You can't miss it. It's well, gorgeous. You've so, done yeah, it. Because I always walk down there. So that's why, sorry, but yes, Wellington, Wellington and King. Yes. And you live nearby, just walking distance, which is so yeah. great. So yeah. I really, really want to thank you on behalf of everybody who will be watching and has watched today. Um, thank you so much, Marcella, for joining us and representing Lux Design so, so well. And um, I'll just tell you before we go a little bit about the next episode of Coffee with Vivian, which will be on Wednesday, March the 24th. The show is every two weeks at 12 noon on Wednesday. And we will be speaking to Chris Chopak. He is a realtor in Toronto with a specialty in environment. And we will be talking about does the environment affect property values? And he is one of the foremost North American experts in this subject. And I think he's got a lot of exciting and important information to share with all of us as to where you buy a home and where it's situated and nature and how does that affect value of your home uh, when you buy and when you sell. So I want to remind you before we close that you can find me and this series on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, Twitter, and on my website, VivianSharon.com slash live. So please like this video, leave a comment. And if you enjoyed it, we'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to seeing you in two weeks, same time uh, and same place. Have a great day. Bye.